in all my years of gaming, I've never played anything that matches the aesthetic of Bleak Sword. You're tasked with lifting the curse of the Bleak Sword, which has infected the mind of Prince Rail and brought darkness and suffering to all. The story is very straightforward, but still present and enjoyable. The first thing that captured my attention was undoubtedly the art style of the game. This is strictly a combat arena experience, however, each diorama is filled with unique looks and you can expect to see a nice little cutscene before each chapter to establish the new setting. There's 12 chapters, and they each carry their own aesthetic with multiple levels in each of them. But instead of getting the same concept for each level, they're all fresh in design and provide different looks even within the same chapters. During the Frozen Peak chapter, you'll find yourself in a snowy landscape, however, in the next level, there might be added wind which keeps you off balance. In the catacombs, you'll find swinging hazards that you always have to be aware of. Although small details, this kept each level feeling different than the last. And something else I loved in Bleak Sword is the enemy variety. There's multiple variations you'll come across throughout the game with some being unique to a chapter and being specific to an environment such as the mud tear, which can only be found in watery settings. On a side note, you really have to be aware of bubbles in the water cause these guys gave me a lot of fits. This enemy variety carries through throughout the whole game so you never have to worry about growing tired of fighting the same guys over and over. And if you're like me, then you'll enjoy the bestiary of the game which gives a bit of lore to each enemy. Now for a darker game, it might not be a surprise to you that the music is also somewhat dark. However, it can also be fairly upbeat as well and complements the battles wonderfully. The overworld tune remains the same throughout, however each chapter and sometimes level carry their own unique sound so again, you never have to worry about growing tired of hearing the same thing. For a game that's as simple as Bleak Sword, it does a great job immersing you into each diorama battle with its unique enemies, soundtracks, and environmental changes. But even without the immersion, the combat is simply satisfying. Bleak Sword offers you three abilities. You can attack, roll, and parry, and you have a stamina bar which will prevent you from button mashing. It refills whenever you're not attacking, but will pause if you are trying to mash the roll button. However, a perfect counter will fill your stamina immediately. The progression of the game is simple. You get XP for beating levels and can choose to upgrade your health, defense, or attack power. However, Bleak Sword only rewards players who perform well, as if you've built XP and are just about to get an upgrade, but you die more than one time on the same level, then your XP will go back to zero. Because of this, it's vital to not play the game recklessly or you'll find yourself in a bad situation as you get to later chapters. It took me a bit to discover the importance of this, and you can pick up items after beating levels which greatly adds to your attributes, but just like the XP, you'll lose the items if you fail more than once on a level. This to me is a great progression system as it prevents you from running through the game, but also incentivizes you to actually play well. As for the challenge of Bleak Sword, it's difficult, fair, and satisfying, and this is coming from someone who played on normal, so even if you're familiar with these arena-style games, then I think you could be happy playing on either normal or doom. Bleak Sword is all about timing and memorizing your enemies' attack patterns. As I mentioned, there's a surplus amount of enemy variety, which also means there's a surplus amount of attacks for you to learn. For some of the small enemies, you might be better off spamming attack, while others you need to focus on parrying. There's also projectile-based bad guys that you want to take out first. Some of the more challenging ones, such as the Dungeon Guardian, can have up to at least 4 to 6 attacks, including some that you can't even parry, so you can expect to lose some lives while figuring them out. The real challenge comes from the timing of enemy spawns. One-on-ones aren't the issue, but you need to be efficient and take out enemies before more spawn in, which can cause you to easily be flustered. It feels great to get on a rhythm, but being hit just once can completely throw you off and result in death. The combat to me was very satisfying, and if I were to pick one gripe with the gameplay, it's that the difficulty can occasionally be unbalanced. You might find yourself breezing through a few levels, only to be halted by a significantly harder one. But then once completing that, the next level might be even easier. This isn't really an issue, but it was noticeable. Now something that also suffered from this issue, but to a lesser extent, is the bosses. The bosses in Bleak Sword are all unique in both design and combat. You'll get a cutscene before the battle to help establish the boss, such as this. These little details just help with the immersion and makes each fight slightly more engaging. 
The bosses are all suited with their own unique attacks for you to memorize, and they all complement their established setting, such as cores, which is the final challenge in the catacombs and is one that I personally struggled with. Most of them will spawn enemies toward the end of the fight, and just as I mentioned earlier, it's all about timing. If you're efficient during the beginning of the battle, then you might not even have to worry about some of these enemies. I looked forward to the bosses at each new chapter, and even though some might be much easier than others, they're all very enjoyable in both combat and aesthetic. If you're worried about the difficulty, then you'll be happy to know that besides just the Doom in Normal mode, upon completion of the game, you unlock Boss Rush in the even harder Bleak mode. Bleak Sword's as simple as it gets, but simple is not always a bad thing if the primary functions of the game are excellently crafted. So if you're looking for a game with some smooth combat, a very unique lo-fi-esque aesthetic, and some captivating boss fights, then Bleak Sword might be something you're looking for. Truly, if you're looking for a satisfying game to pick up and play, then I highly recommend checking out Bleak Sword. My time's been filled up with Tears of the Kingdom, so it felt great to break out of that for a bit. And as always, if you're a fan of indie or Nintendo games, then please do consider subscribing for some similar content. So, until next time. Thank you.